Hundreds of members of an extremist Jewish group called Lev Tahor are attempting to travel to Iran for asylum. Group leaders pledged allegiance to Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Lev Tahor is an anti-Zionist sect currently based in Guatemala. It's made of around 280 members. Family members of those of them holding American citizenship have appealed to the State Department asking it to prevent the trip as well as prevent the departure of the group to Iran. Many in the group hold Israeli citizenship, parking, sparking fears among relatives here in Israel and of course within Israeli security officials that if they arrive in Tehran they might be used as a bargaining chip with Israel and the West. Israel Foreign Ministry said that it's utilizing a variety of channels in an effort to resolve the situation. For more on that, we're joined by Dr. Tamar Elam Gindin. She's an Iran expert at the Esri Center in at Haifa University. Thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah. Well, it's a very strange story, but we do want to ask you, what happens if these sect members actually manage to make it to Iran? How do you think they might be welcomed? I think the Islamic Republic will welcome them like it did welcome other anti-Zionist ultra-Orthodox Jews who came to express their anti-Zionist sentiment and identify with the Islamic Republic on this subject. So give us an example. I understand you're referring to past cases. What can we learn from what happened in the past and, and, and how could things look if that happens? I think they will be used for um, the propaganda of the Islamic Republic. We've seen in the past that, the, first of all, the Islamic Republic says, and Khamenei said in his book, Palestine, we are not against Jews. There are good Jews and bad Jews, like everyone, every other group in the world. It's just that all the criminals went to Israel. So as long as you're anti-Zionist, you're okay. And they love showing Jews who are anti-Zionist and anti-Israel. And they love showing Jews who look like Jews. I, I was once interviewed to a documentary, um, in, to an Iranian documentary, and they said, could you introduce us to Jews who really look Jewish? So these people really look Jewish. This is what they're looking for. And it's excellent for their propaganda. I expect we'll see them in official ceremonies. And they, the Islamic Republic will I expect the Islamic Republic to embrace them. Tell us about previous groups that you've been uh, following. Um, have they stayed in Iran? Uh, have they continued to practice Judaism and, and anti-Zionism from there? I don't know what happened to these groups after uh, being used for propaganda. I just remember you know, the, the pictures from official ceremonies of the Islamic Republic uh, and mutual statements uh, expressing their hatred to Israel and their sentiment that Israel should not exist. But Jews in Iran have a complete freedom of religion. They have complete freedom to practice Judaism. They're allowed to drink wine for Kiddush. Uh, they have a representative in the parliament. When, a Jew, when an Iranian Jew goes to the ballot, uh, they vote and they cast one vote for the Jewish representative and one vote for the representative of, of their uh, province. So uh, in general, not only these ultra-Orthodox, but any Jews who live in Iran, they have to align with the regime in expressing their um, hatred to Israel. But besides that, as long as they're not all of a sudden accused of uh, espionage for Israel, they're okay. And how they, many Jews much currently better. live in Iran, and 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 how do you think the Jewish community would react to the arrival of of those uh, members of the sect? Uh, well, the estimate of the number of Jews in Iran is somewhere between nine thousand and twenty-five thousand. It depends who you ask. The Jewish community itself would say twenty-five thousand. There's no really no real registry of minorities or of any uh, religion associated statistics in Iran. They don't have religion in their uh, ID documents. Um, one of my colleagues, I think she'd rather not sit, not be mentioned by name, uh, estimated according to the number of matzahs sold each Pesach, 
<laughs> it's about 15,000. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, that's also a way of doing survey. Uh, I, I hope they didn't uh, count uh, the knedelach as well because it can be confusing. <laughs> you know how many knedelach per person? Uh, who knows? No, not in Iran. <laughs> um, a word about um, and really a word because we're nearing to the end. Um, how is Iran uh, looking two months into the Raisi government? Uh, are we seeing any? Um, social changes on the ground, any reforms that he's trying to advance? Um, I think it was last week or two last week or two weeks ago that there were new new orders or uh, new censorship uh, guidelines on the national broadcast that women should not be seen wearing leather gloves or wearing red or drinking red. Uh, beverages or men should not be seen pouring tea to women because it's disrespectful. Two boys cannot be shown alone in one house or in one room. So uh, there, there are a lot of uh, more conservative guidelines right now. Of course, these guidelines are for the National Broadcast Authority that nobody watches except the people who already support the regime. The yeah. others just watch satellite programs from abroad.